Good morning, boys and girls. It's raining. I think I must have made it rain with my rain stick yesterday. Sorry, but we need some rain too. All right, um, let's just quickly review our uppercase Z. It's three strokes. We start up at the sky and go across, then down at an angle to the ground. So kind of looks like a seven, but we're not done because we're not even talking about numbers, but um, we're talking about alphabet letters. So after you do that, then you go back that way. So it's three strokes, one, two, three. And then the lowercase, exactly the same thing except from the fence, one, two, three, to the ground. Okay, all righty. Now this is our last listening story. So get those listening ears ready. I'm gonna read the story twice, then we'll answer the questions. All right, so this is still about Banana Monkey. That's his name, Banana Monkey, and it's called Banana's Busy Day. Banana had a busy day. First, he and his mother took a bus to the store. They bought cherries at the store. When they got home, they made a cherry pie. Then Frisky and Jumper came to visit, and they all ate the pie for a snack. Okay, I'm gonna read it one more time, then we'll answer the questions. Banana's busy day. Banana had a busy day. First, he and his mother took a bus to the store. They bought cherries at the store. When they got home, they made a cherry pie. Then Frisky and Jumper came to visit, and they all ate the pie for a snack. All right, so here's your first question, and we've got a car, a bike, and a bus. How did Banana and his mother get to the store? Did they take a car, a bike, or a bus? Think about how Banana and his mother got there, not how we would get there. Mm -hmm. They took a bus. Now we've got cherries, milk, and flowers. What did they buy at the store? Did they buy cherries, milk, or flowers? Think about what they made later when they got home and what you need to make that. Yeah, they bought cherries. What did they eat for snack? This is when Banana's friends came to visit. What did they, they bought something at the store, they made it when they got home, and then when Banana's friends came, what did they eat? Were they cookies, ice cream, or cherry pie? Yeah, cherry pie. Very good, okay. That was our last listening and set my camera down Move this out alrighty um, I am gonna read to start with the very hungry caterpillar and this is written and illustrated by Eric Carl and Eric Carl likes to paint and it almost looks like it's finger paint because you can see like that through it I think he paints maybe a big piece of paper in green, a huge paper in green, different shades of green. Then he cuts them apart and he glues them together in sections like he did to make this caterpillar. And then this, now this I actually see some brush strokes, like he used a big piece of red paper and he he painted the, the red head uh, a big piece and then he cut it out and joined it with that and then put some more pieces of green and yellow on there for the face. So Eric Carl, that's what he likes to use. He likes to use paint. Okay. The Very Hungry Caterpillar. All right. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. Now does the moon, is there really a man on the moon? Nope, but if you look up at night at a full moon, you'll see the craters. Those are the little dips in the surface of the moon and it might kind of look like a man's face. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop! Out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. 
So we're starting with the first day of the calendar week. Not the first day of our school week. Our first day of our school week would be a Monday, but the first day on the calendar is Sunday. So try and think what comes after Sunday. Let's see if you have the right answer. Okay, so he started to look for some food. On Monday, so Sunday, Monday, on Monday he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. Look, there he came through it. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. So he was, he hatched on Sunday. On Monday, he ate one apple. On Tuesday, he ate two pears. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums, but he was still hungry. So the next day is going to be th Thursday. On Wednesday, he ate through three things. How many things do you think he's going to eat this time? Let's see. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries. So we're doing the days of the week in order in the correct sequence, and we're counting in the correct sequence. Okay, but he was still hungry. Went through all those, came out there. On Friday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. One, two, three, four, five. On Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. Oh dear. On Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, that's meat, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. And that night, he had a stomach ache. Oh, look at his face. That's how I would look if I had a, if I ate all of that. I'd have a stomach ache. The next day was Sunday again. Now remember, he hatched out on a Sunday. The caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf, and after that, he felt much better. So remember, the butterfly will lay her eggs on a, a leaf, and it's a butterfly weed, okay? Because she knows that when her caterpillars hatch out, right away that's what he, he, they're going to eat. They're gonna eat that green caterpillar um, butterfly weed leaf. So he's feeling better, and look, he ate through, and you see the holes? He ate through the leaf, and he was feeling much better. Oh, now he wasn't hungry anymore, and he wasn't a caterpillar anymore. Oh, he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big, fat caterpillar. And it's okay that we call him fat. Animals and insects don't have feelings like we do. Now look at the different shades of green that Eric Carl used to paint with. So he probably had a big, huge piece of paper, and he, he painted some this color and some this color and this color and this color. Then when it was all dry, he cut these pieces out and glued them together. So can you see how it's not totally colored in? It's got different shades of green because there is not just one shade of green. There's many shades of green. This shade of green has more blue in it. This shade of green has more yellow in it. Well, he built a small house called a cocoon, and boys and girls, Eric Carl, when he was making this book, he thought that butterfly caterpillars make cocoons, but they don't, they make chrysalises. Um, and he was even in an interview on TV later uh, after the book came out, and he said he had to apologize that he should have called this a chrysalis. But he made a mistake, just like grown-ups do, right? We all make mistakes. And But I want you to look at the colors. Now look, those are shades of brown, aren't they? Different shades of brown. 
This brown has more red in it. And this has more yellow in it. And so he took probably big pieces of paper and painted some dark brown and some reddish brown and some yellowish brown, let it all dry, and then he cut sections apart and he made a chrysalis. You could do that at home with your parents' permission. You could do that, all right? So he stayed inside for more than two weeks. Then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon and he pushed his way out. Is he gonna come out like this? How's he, what's he gonna come out? Do you remember that big word we talked about, metamorphosis? That means change. He went f into the chrysalis and he, God changed his body into a beautiful butterfly. Now this butterfly is symmetrical. Remember that word? If you draw a line down the center, does this side look exactly like that side? It does. It's got the same patterns and colors. So this side's the same as that side. And he's a beautiful butterfly. So he changed while he was in that chrysalis. The end. I love that book. Now, one fall day, I was out walking, and this leaf was on the ground, and it had this attached to it. That is a cocoon. So what do you think came out of that? Was it a butterfly or a moth? Yeah, it was a moth. And can you see where it came out of the cocoon? So that looks different from a chrysalis. And I've got it in this box because the leaf is really crumbly. I've even glued the leaf so it won't bounce around because you can see at the bottom, before I glued the leaf, it bounced around and there's part of the leaf. It's very fragile now because it's not attached to the tree. When the leaves drop off, they're not getting their water and nutrients that they need, so they get very fragile. And I didn't want this to break apart. I wanted to be able to show it year after year. I hope you can see that. There's nothing in there anymore. The moth chewed its way out and came out and flew away. So that's the difference between a butterfly and a moth. There are lots more differences between butterflies and moths, but that's one that we can talk about. And you can maybe do some homework and maybe your family would help you Google the differences between butterflies and moths. So we know they come out of a chrysalis or a cocoon. Butterflies fly around during the day and sleep at night. Moths come out at night and sleep during the day. Their antennas are different too. So those are three differences between the two insects. They're both insects, okay? All righty, now then, this is called Zen, Z-E-N, Happiness, by John J. Muth. So I think that John J. Muth wrote the words and colored the pictures. Zen, Happiness. And right now, it's kind of hard for us to be really, really happy because we're all having to stay home instead of going to school. Maybe we're not getting to see our friends, but we still need to find happiness. We can't let this situation make us sad, okay? Because we know it's going to change, it's gonna get better, and we're having to stay away from our school and our friends because uh, we want to be healthy. And that's the most important thing right now for everyone in the United States and the whole world to get healthy again. So Zen is just a type of um, way that you feel, that you feel happy, and peaceful and plus it begins with a Z and that's what we're on this week. Z. 
We are born again with each new day. That's right. If you had a bad day yesterday, which we all do, we're grumpy or we're angry uh, or we're sad, uh, the next day, it's, it's like my whiteboard. I erase it and it's all clean and white again. So each morning when you wake up, you can start fresh. Okay, so we are born again with each new day. I like that. Words both true and kind can change the world. That is so true. It can change the world for better. Because if you say kind and true words, it makes people feel happy. People want to get along with each other. And that's what Jesus wants us to do is get along with everyone. Be someone you want to be around. Would you want to be around someone who tattles or who doesn't share or who fights with you or who's grumpy or pouts? No. So we have to be that kind of person that's happy and shares and says kind things so others will want to be around us. Think how the type of person you would want to be around. And that's the kind of person you need to be. I like this panda bear. He's sharing his umbrella. He's covering them all, isn't he? That's the kind of person we want to be around. What we do now is what matters most. They're visiting an elderly person. Can you see she's got white hair and she walks with a cane and maybe she's lonely and they're visiting her. Now, of course, a panda bear would not come to visit, but when we're able to visit people again, that would be a nice thing to do is visit say hello to your neighbors and especially take care of those neighbors who are lonely and can't do for themselves right now or any time. So what we do now is what matters most. What we think we can become. So if you think you would like to become a ballerina, you have to practice hard. It's not magic. You can't just wake up one day and be a, ma a ballerina, but you can keep thinking, I would really like to become a ballerina and you could practice that. Or I'd really like to become a baseball player and you can practice that. It takes many hours of practice to be able to get good at some things. And you know what? If you don't get super duper duper good, just do it because you enjoy it. That will make you happy. With our thoughts, we create the world. So with your good thoughts, you can create a happy world, can't you? And with your smart thoughts, you might invent something that is very important to people. Right now, the scientists are trying to invent a vaccine. So you know that's a shot that will help us stay healthy. And they're working very hard and they're using their brain, their good thoughts that God gave them to keep us healthy. They're working very hard and very um, fast to make a new vaccine for us. When you reach the top, keep climbing. So when you get really good at something, keep working hard. Don't stop. Don't say, oh, I'm good at everything. I'm done. Nope. Each day we have to keep learning and being kind and keep working hard. You're never too old to learn. My mother is 91 years old and she's still learning new things. She uses the computer, she uses her cell phone, she knits uh, hats and things um, where she has to read a pattern, maybe a new pattern that she's never used before. She has to think, so 91 years old and she's still learning and doing new things. I love that. Be kind to yourself. Whatever you do today, let it be enough. So don't beat yourself up. Uh, don't say in your mind, oh, I didn't get to that. There's a new day tomorrow. If you did your best, forget the rest, right? 
always do your best. Even if it's, um, if you're a trash man and you're picking up trash, do your best. If you're a scientist working on a new vaccine, do your best. If you're cleaning up your room, do your best. Whatever you do, always make it your best. Three things cannot remain hidden. The sun, the moon, and the truth. I like that. Three things cannot remain hidden. The sun, the moon, and the truth. The truth always comes out, doesn't it? It always comes out. You, as much as anyone in the universe, deserve your love and respect. So you have to love yourself first before anyone else will love you. And say, I'm okay. Even if I had a bad day, tomorrow's a new day. I'll try hard tomorrow. From stillness, life rises. So sometimes it's good to be still. You do not always have to be going to practices and meetings and, and rushing around or watching TV. Sometimes it's good just to sit and be quiet and listen to your surroundings. This morning, Mr. Schmidt and I, we got up, ate breakfast. I did my Bible study. And we just, after I was done with that, we sat and listened to the rain. It was very peaceful. Sometimes you'll hear thoughts pop into your head that you hadn't thought before. So don't be rushing around all the time. That's what I think the reason why we got to stay home so much is we needed to slow down. Sometimes when we're rushing so much, we don't get to live life to the fullest. Sometimes we just need to be quiet. It's okay to be quiet. It's okay to be bored. You don't have to be busy every single minute. May all beings have happy minds. We do all want to have happy minds. We shouldn't think bad thoughts, even though we do. That's the way we were born, boys and girls. We were born with sin in us. Only Jesus was born perfect. The rest of us have to work very, very hard every day. But if you think bad thoughts, you can say, I'm sorry, God. I didn't mean to think that. Forgive me. The end. So that book was called Zen Happiness. Now, there's some books out there that if the libraries were open, I would have gone and gotten one. It's about Zen Pig. And maybe some of you have that book at home. I had not been able to buy them yet. And I was going to go to the library and get some to read to you. But the libraries are closed, so that's the way it goes, right? But I'm going to order some on Amazon or through Scholastic, if Scholastic ever has them. And it's a great series about how to be kind and happy and that it's okay to be quiet. So if your families can find those books online, it's Zen Pig, I believe. And I will research a little further. And if that's not the right name for it, I'll tell you tomorrow, but they are excellent books, and I wish I could have read one to you, but I'm very happy that I had this book, Zen Happiness. I like that. All right. Tomorrow, we're going to sing the song, Who Let the Letters Out? And that's from A to Z, and we'll have to remember our actions. Even I will have to remember the actions to each letter sound. So it's been a while since we've done the whole song. So we'll do that tomorrow. Um, anyway, um, I think that's all I've got to do today. Let me look at my... Yeah, that's all I've got. So I wish you Zen happiness. And today your homework is just to sit quietly... And if it's raining where you live, close your eyes and listen to the rain. And just be still and quiet. You can breathe in through your nose 
and out through your mouth. You can put your hand on your tummy, and when you breathe in, your tummy goes out, and when you breathe out, your tummy comes in, and do that, and that'll calm you down. And remember, we talked about that. When you are angry, before you react, before you throw or hit or punch or spit or bite, breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth, and it'll calm you down, and you can think about how to react the right way. Okay, bye boys and girls.